Okay, so this video is geared towards dental assistance, and it's on something that I find is very helpful during the course of a procedure, and that is just keeping the operatory tidy or keeping it clean during the course of a procedure. Daniel, and I've shown on this title slide that it, prevention is greater than cure. That means the more that we can prevent problems from happening, that weighs a lot more than trying to fix problems or trying to cure problems as they arise during the middle of a procedure. So let's go over some of those preventative things during the slideshow. So this is what we call our 12 o'clock wall, or at least this is going to be our tray setup. This is where a majority of all of the uh, transaction is going to be happening during the course of the appointment. And so it's this area here that needs to be kept clean, or at least in some sort of order so that the procedure can go smoothly. So I'm going to point out some of the things in our office, and specifically to me, that I like to have to make this whole thing smoothly flow. Okay, one thing I'd say is, first of all, keep the instruments lined up. You know, sometimes when we are handing instruments back and forth, it's easy to just uh, put an instrument and just kind of lay it on there diagonally instead of keeping it lined up with everything else. Also, if something is covering those instruments, like if you're in the middle of something and uh, you take one of these other instruments and put it on top of it, more times than not, the instrument that you're going to want is going to be the one on the bottom, which means you now have to take the thing that's on top, move it off, and then you can finally get to the item that's what you're really wanting. So as a general rule, don't put anything actually on top of all those instruments that are laying there. Leave that free and clear so you can go pick up the instruments as needed. Also, find a pattern that works for you. It doesn't have to be a specific one, just something that works for you where you try to put the same instrument in the same area every time so that when you need it quickly, you kind of know where to go. You don't have to be scanning up and down the tray trying to find that particular instrument. Also, we want to avoid the red paper uh, right here that seems to get on everything when you touch it. Actually, I have a slide here that kind of better demonstrates that. Let me move that slide up here. But it is uh, one of these things that we have found that when you are loading this up, it's great. It's really good marking paper. But as you can see, when you load it onto it, you can get it on your gloves. And when it's on your gloves, as this demonstration shows, it gets on everything. Sometimes assistants will take a cotton forceps and they'll hold on to the red paper and slide it onto the, onto the holder. But now the tips of those uh, cotton forceps have got red ink. So if you're gonna do it that way, you need to wipe that off. So in these two instances, either wearing your gloves or using cotton forceps, you're gonna take off your gloves and get new gloves, or you're going to wipe off the uh, cotton uh, four step when you're done loading up this red paper and when you finally have the red paper loaded get it out of the way so it's not it's not in the middle of everything right here this is kind of initially set up but you don't want to take this and again you don't want to lay it across these instruments you don't want to lay it where maybe a composite tip might get on there or one of these brushes might get on there just know that this gets on everything so make sure it's kind of out of the way during the middle of the procedure Another rule that I kind of have is hinged instruments are to be remaining off the tray. When I say the tray, I'm talking about this, in this case, this light purple plastic tray. I want to keep the hinged instruments off. So that's things like cotton forceps, hemostat, scissors, articulating paper holder, uh, ring forceps, which is not in this picture. But anything that has like a fulcrum, anything that you squeeze, keep that off the tray. It's a kind of a big clunky instrument and it takes up a lot of room. There's also two things that we've just kind of found out over the years it's best to do is take the scissors. It's kind of sharp. It's not that bad, but it's, you know, it can poke things, but we don't need it that often. So let's tuck it underneath the tray. Also, the spatula, that's only needed when we're going to be mixing up cement, uh, that can be out of the way too. We find that when we put the spatula on here, it gets many times confused with the mirror uh, handle because the mirror handle Unlike all their instruments, you have the mirror on one end and nothing on the other. Well, the same thing with the spatula. You got the spatula flat end on one, but nothing on the other. And so many times we'll reach thinking we're reaching for the mirror when in fact it's actually the spatula. So we tuck it underneath the tray. Uh, that way you can avoid the frustration of picking up the wrong instrument. Uh, kind of harping back on that same topic of don't let other things get on the tray. This includes things like gauze, cotton, brushes, and probably the worst thing of all is to have floss. Floss is very small, it's hard to see, but when it is laying across instruments, you can imagine you go to try to pick up something, that floss gets tangled around the instruments, and now things start flying off the tray and start falling onto the floor. So keep floss off of the tray. That's like the biggest thing that I would say is the 
biggest pet peeve that I have is when floss is in the way. If we need floss during the, the procedure, we'll take it. We'll take it, you know, take it from the spool, use what we need, throw it away. Or if we're going to hold on to it and reuse it, put it back here. Don't put it over here on the tray. Uh, some other items that we work with, uh, blue etch and cutrol, which is our viscostat or our astringent agent. Whenever we get, when we're using this stuff, when we apply the plunger and use it and we put it back down, sometimes little bits of it might come dripping off of here. Or some of it might ooze out of that tip. And so that can be a problem as well. So whenever we get done using it, let's try to put the tip and the, and the, the whole uh, uh, syringe on a two by two, something that in case it oozes out of the tip, it's gonna get caught on the two by two and the two by two can be easily just thrown away. With we, we've got bottled products, our, our um, bonding agent here, the um, antiseptic that we use. Those are things that, you know, anything that has a lid on it, whenever you are done using it, put the lid on right away. Don't leave the lid off because sometimes that stuff will evaporate or you knock it over or the tip might get contaminated during the process. So take off the, take off the bottle cap, use it, and put the bottle cap back on. And uh, also don't dispense any of these products until we're actually ready to use it. So while the patient is getting numb, you don't drip it out into the, these wells. You wait until we're ready to use it. I know it's good to think ahead and want to have things ready, but when it comes to these liquid materials, you want them fresh the moment that we're going to apply them. You don't want them hanging out for 10, 15, 20 minutes ahead of time. Um, let's see what else. And then kind of when you're done, you can imagine these bottles, they can kind of get in the way. When we're done with them, move them back again to the back end of the counter so they're not gonna get knocked over and then they roll right off the countertop onto the floor. Instruments such as pluggers um, or compackers, and um, I call them cord placers or these flat instruments, we use those to put composites into place, okay? And a lot of times we find that uh, when we properly it should be done is we wipe down the instrument at the end of the appointment and it runs through sterilization and then it comes out and it should be ready to go. However, there's sometimes little bits of residue. I think it's either from the composite or it could be from the detergent in the um, dishwasher, but more than likely it's going to be composite, I think, because detergent would get on all the instruments, but it only seems to be these two instruments seem to have this white residue. So somehow it can still make it through the whole process. It's of course clean, it's been sterilized, but that that white residue needs to be taken off. And so while you're waiting for the patient to get numb, that's a perfect time to go look at these two instruments and clean them off. You can either wipe them off or sometimes we have a wire brush that we can brush that off. Oh, not that tray, not that one, not that one. Okay, uh, air water tips. This is now going over to the doctor's bracket table. I like to have the air water tips. We have two of them. We have an air water plus just an air only. When we load those on, I want the air waters pointing towards, pointing away, pointing towards the feet. Uh, I don't want them the other way because when they're pointing the opposite direction, when we go pick up this handpiece, this hose gets caught on that tip and then the tip comes up out of the holster and falls on the ground. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's another one. Topical gel. So inside this bottle, again, another bottled thing. Take the lid off. You get a cotton Q-tip. Uh, you put then the little dab. You might put it on a two by two uh, in anticipation of the patient showing up. When they do show up, we place a topical gel. We let it set. When we take that Q-tip out, take it and put it directly into the trash. Don't take it and just kind of quickly drop it since you're going to go grab the suction to get that bad taste out. Don't drop that Q-tip on the tray because when you do that, now you have that that greasy, slimy uh, topical gel getting on the instrument. So again, tray tidiness means you don't get all these messy materials cross-contaminating with anything else. Same thing with eyewear, the, the patient's eye protection. Make sure those are clean before you hand them to the patient. They should be cleaned at the time we set up the operatory, but maybe while you're waiting for the anesthetic to soak in or for the doctor to show up, you can actually take the glasses, hold them up, and make sure that they don't have any smudges on them. Have enough dry angles and cotton rolls to make it through the procedure. You know, we'll be in the middle of something and maybe they only have out one dry angle when really we need three. So right in the middle of the procedure, we have to go now go to the, the, the drawer and go pull out and get some more, you know, triangles and use them. Now, triangles aren't exactly cheap. They're like 25 cents each. So we definitely don't want to waste them, but we're going to use them if we need them. And so after a while, you kind of get a feel for how many we're going to need. And just make sure you have enough to get through the procedure. 
Uh, suction tubes, you want to make sure that they're not tangled up because you can imagine you go pick up one tube and it's caught around another one. That means the one you don't have in your hand is going to come up out of the holster and fall onto the ground. So making sure that the suction tubes are not tangled is, um, is a way of preventing that problem from occurring. The other thing too is when we're using the suction, you turn it on to put it in the mouth. When we take it out of the mouth, we're not using it, turn it off. So when you're standing there just waiting uh, for the doctor to switch out a burr or something, turn off the suction. There's no point in having it on. And when you have it in the holster, there's no point in having it on. So uh, only really have it on when we're actually in the patient's mouth. Whenever I have some kind of paste, paste material like impression material or temporary cement or vinyl cement, we want to make sure that we bleed a little bit. Those A and B paste are going to be bled out onto a two by two and then uh, that way we know they're equally coming out. Then you put the tip on. So make sure that that is done prior to putting the tips on. And then actually when you squeeze that out on a two by two, take that two by two and just throw it right away. There's no point in having those two paste out laying on the countertop because something will inevitably land on either one of those two pastes and now you have another mess to contend with. And then when we're done with the impression guns, put them over into the three o'clock counter. We're gonna sometimes have them on the 12 o'clock counter right when we're ready to take the impression. But after the impression's done, move it over to the three o'clock counter just to kind of keep that area free and clear of unnecessary things. When you're selecting a shade tab, sometimes you hold up the entire shade tab and look to see what's the right shade. When you, you, know, you take one out, you hold it up, make sure it's the right one. Put it right back in the holder. Again, don't leave it out. Don't think, well, we'll leave it out and write it down later. No, write it out now and then put the individual one back in and then put the entire complete shade uh, kit off to the side. Because more times than not, somehow these shade tabs go missing. They're very small and they can get mixed in with other pieces of trash and they can get thrown out. And you can't just buy one little replacement. You have to buy the entire thing and those are not cheap. We like to warm the anesthetic. Uh, we do that by putting uh, in a Dixie cup warm tap water or hot tap water and we let the anesthetic soak. It needs to soak in there for about a minute or two in order for that anesthetic to get nice and warm. So that's the purpose of the Dixie cup is to hold hot water to put the anesthetic in right before we get ready to use it. Again, you'd wanna do this a little bit prior to us actually giving the anesthetic, but you wouldn't want to do it 15 minutes before we plan on giving the anesthetic because then it's going to cool down and we'll have lost the reason why we did it in the first place. I like to have the TV on for the patient. Uh, have the volume turned down because you and the doctor are going to be talking with the patient and you don't need the TV up on the ceiling distracting or getting in the way of what's going on. But when you already have it on, when you turn the or lay the patient back, it's already there. You don't have to go now look for the remote control and turn it on and, and just try to find a channel that the patient likes. We find that about 80, 90% of the time, they're going to want HGTV. So we'll just put it on that by default. It seems to be what most people are okay with watching. If they want to change it to something else, great, we'll change it. But let's at least have the TV on, but have the volume down and you know mute when we're uh, seating the patient. Also I want to have the uh, patient's chart on the 12 o'clock wall up and ready to go. You can have it down at the bottom if you're working on some other things, but when the doc comes into the room, they're getting ready to start the procedure, I like to have the chart up and if we need to have the x-ray, of course, we'll call for that to kind of verify the tooth that we are working on. Mirrors, this should go without uh, too much explanation when you hand it to the patient. Sometimes after an appointment, you know, we'll spray it off with a disinfectant. If that is left to dry, you get that kind of smudgy, uh, dirty look to it. Even though it's clean stuff that's on there, it looks bad. So make sure it's clean. It would be ideal to clean it when you're kind of breaking down the room and cleaning it up, getting it ready for the next patient. But when you're getting ready to hand the mirror to the patient, just double check to make sure it's actually clean. If it isn't, just discreetly grab yourself a Kleenex and clean it off before you hand it to them. Air water tips, go back to this for a moment. The air water tip actually has to be fully inserted into the handle. A uh, common mistake is that you put it in, or some assistants will put it in, but then they don't put it in all the way. And what happens when you go hit the air, the tip comes flying out. When you put that in the patient's mouth and you hit it and it goes flying out, that could be a bad situation. So what you do is you put the air water tip into the handle and then you'll hear it click and then you'll tug back on it just to make sure it's fully locked into place. A few things to look for would be right here, this little hub. Is it 
nestled up nice and tight against the, the handle, or is it sticking out by a couple of millimeters? The other thing too to look for is this uh, outer ring. When it is not locked, it's still going to be kind of set back within the actual air water um, handle. When it's fully in place, that will have sprung forward and you'll see it, it's in, in its correct position. So this is just a matter of getting familiar with how this is set up. And that is pretty much it on how to keep the 12 o'clock wall and basically the whole operatory tidy during the entire procedure. All right. Thank you.